Hey guys, how's it going? Welcome back to Tom Spark Reviews. Today we're talking about making the automated media server in the cloud. Now I already made a video on the channel that did pretty well. I think around like 50,000 views, which is really good for this channel since we're a smaller channel focusing on guides and stuff primarily. In that video, I talked about how to make an automated media server pretty much on Windows. Now there are also other ways to do this, whether you want to use Linux, um, maybe even Mac. Um, there's plenty of ways to make an automated media server. And in that video, I focused on the Windows experience for noobs. In this video, I want to talk about a similar slant. This is going to be kind of like the noobs guide on how to make an automated media server in the cloud. Now, no matter who you are, this is something you can achieve. It doesn't really require much technical background at all. You don't need to know how to code. You don't need to mess with Linux. You don't need to mess with um, Docker or any of that. You don't need to know any commands or anything. So this video is gonna be very easy to follow for pretty much anyone. And that's kind of the bent here, guys. And it's gonna require a couple things, but overall, it's gonna be pretty affordable in a lot of ways. Number one, you're not gonna need an external media drive. Um, these can go from anywhere to 200 to $500 for NAS, and things like that can get quite pricey. Um, additionally, we have some really good promo codes here to give you guys some discounts on some of these products I'm gonna be recommending to you use. But if you don't want to do it this way, you can also choose your own products and kind of get the same thing accomplished. So right away, we're going to be starting off with a diagram I made to make things even easier for you guys to understand. So guys, basically what we're doing is that we have your computer down here. Um, we have your computer. Um, it's not really going to have anything on it. It's not hosting the files. Um, you're not really messing with VPN on it. Um, you're not really doing anything on it, which is the benefit, like I said. One of the cool things about this method is you get to take use of 10 gigabyte per second, um, which is gonna kind of roughly equate to like a thousand megabytes a second downloads for torrents, which is really good. So if you're somewhere where you don't have storage on your computer or good internet, this is the method for you. And it's gonna create the best media server for you in that way. Um, <clears throat> so basically what we're gonna be doing is we're going to connect our computer to what is called a seed box. Now, a seed box is essentially a VPS. It's going to be like a computer in the cloud. And the seed box we're going to be recommending for this video is going to be Rapid Seed Box. Um, so we're pretty much going to be getting our seed box set up with these core applications, Radar, Sonar, and Jacket. Now, this is kind of the holy trifecta. There is a newer one called Prowler, which works even better with Sonar and Radar, but I didn't find an application for that on... Um, uh, rapid seed box. It's not a huge issue though, um, because jacket works fine. Um, so basically what jacket is going to do is it's going to look on torrent websites for specific files. It's going to kind of serve as the way for radar and sonar to find files. Um, it's pretty much going to be like, you're going to copy and paste each individual website, um, torrent website as an index for radar and sonar. Now, um, so basically what's going to happen is, is once Radar and Sonar, these applications that you can pre-install in Rapid Seedbox with Jacket, um, you're pretty much going to look up the movie or TV show. Um, of course, public domain TV shows, nothing illegal, guys. Um, <clears throat> so we're going to look up that TV show, public domain, copyright free. And then once it finds it, it's going to um, connect to the torrent application that we will connect to it. We're going to be using Deluge in this tutorial. Um, it's going to start downloading it. Now, what I do in this tutorial is I'm going to be using TorGuard VPN Soxify Proxy that comes um, included with a basic VPN subscription. If you use code TOMSPARK2023, this is around $5 to $30, um, $5 a month to $30 a year, $70 for three years. So this is extremely affordable. Um, the copyright troll would say, you know, hey, we noticed somebody using this. They're not going to be able to tell your ISP that it's you because it's going to be anonymized by that proxy IP. Additionally, even through this layer, it's going to see the Seedbox IP, but TorGuard and Rapid Seedbox aren't really going to be communicating. So it's a good amount of obfuscation overall, ensuring that your base computer's IP address is never leaked. So this is a pretty good method. A lot of people might not trust Rapid Seedbox or Seedboxes overall, but that's why we are recommending one of the most trusted VPN solutions with their proxy solution to anonymize your IP um, as an additional layer. So guys, once all that is kind of downloaded, um, we're going to be uh, moving the files from the torrent application into the Seedbox's storage. And this is done kind of very easily. Um, I even showed accessing it with the remote kind of GUI to access the Seedbox. So you could even watch it on there, I guess, if you wanted. Um, but primarily what you'll probably do is have Plex on your Seedbox and you could connect um, that kind of IP from your Seedbox into something that you can watch on your TV. 
um, you can connect VLC, um, Flex, something like that to the Seedbox server IP to connect and be able to view the files. So basically the Seedbox is serving as kind of like that centralized IP um, server that's gonna be up all the time. Even your friends could watch it if you give it to them. Um, and that's gonna be able to be connected to your com uh, computer with some kind of smart device, like I said, and NVIDIA Shield. All right, guys, so first let's begin this tutorial with what tools you'll need because that will help us go forward and show you how to use them. First up, we're gonna be using TorGuard VPN SOX5 proxy. Now TorGuard VPN, the basic VPN plan includes a SOX5 proxy, which you can use to anonymize your BitTorrent client on the seed box. This is important um, as a kind of a secondary layer of anonymity. You don't necessarily need to trust your seed box because your IP will be anonymized by TorGuard. Um, the seed box's IP will also be separate from your real IP but doing so ensures that you will never use a service that will give away your logs. TorGuard will not give away logs. They've never given away logs. And the good news is you can get their proxy service for around $5 a month or $30 a year. If you enter in code TomSpark2023, as you can see here, it gives you 50% off and it's $30 a year if you wanna get that plan. Now this is pretty much cheaper than any other VPN service. It also has uh, uses outside of the seed box if you wanna use your VPN on your main computer or even other devices. So this is what we'll be using as I showed in the diagram to anonymize your IP within the BitTorrent section area on the, the cloud basically or your seed box. Additionally guys, if you're not into TorGuard, another good option could be NordVPN. Um, if you click on the link in the description down below, you should be able to get the best current deal going with Nord. They have proxy services available as well with these select servers. Maybe not as many as TorGuard, but it's still a decent amount for most areas in the world that you can take advantage of. One advantage of NordVPN or TorGuard is their streaming compatibility. So if you plan on using a VPN to unlock geo restrictions with something like Netflix, it's actually one of the better VPNs to do that. However, if you're specifically thinking just about using your automated media server, which is the entire point of this video, TorGuard is going to be a better deal, but NordVPN does have those extra benefits of just being a VPN that does work really well with other streaming services, which could be another value proposition. So maybe think about that when deciding which one to go for, whether Nord or TorGuard. Just remember to use the promo code for either one to get the best deal going forward. Now the next tool we're going to need is the seed box itself and this is what's going to be hosting um, our data in terms of the files on the internet. It's also going to give you 10 gigabyte per second speeds to download stuff which is probably better than the internet you have at home. So this is going to be very convenient. Not only that but this is going to serve as our VPS that hosts our applications that will queue and download torrents for us. So Rapid Seedbox is going to be a little bit more expensive than TorGuard. This is probably the bulk of the cost. But for what you get, I do think it's a decent price. Additionally, you could get 35% off Rapid Seedbox with my discount code in the description down below. So make sure to use that discount code for Rapid Seedbox as well as a discount for TorGuard to save as much money as possible. You can even get yearly to get it for a little bit cheaper. It's going to be around $200 for a year for a VPS that is this good. Honestly, not a bad deal, especially when you consider the price of getting an NAS, which should cost anywhere between three to $400 for a good one. Uh, high speed internet is going to probably be $100 a month. So honestly, you can save a lot of money by doing this method, as well as maybe saving some money on some streaming services since you're going to be primarily um, downloading Linux ISOs and public domain content, right? Anyways, guys, let's get into, you know, how we start setting up these tools in order to use them. So with Rapid Seedbox, it's pretty simple. You're pretty much going to buy it and then automatically just kind of log in and immediately get to work. So let's go ahead and do that right now. So once you log in, this is what it's going to look like with Rapid Seedbox. And honestly, I think the reason I like this service so much is because it's simple to use. They have tons of support guides as well. Um, so if this video is a little too confusing for you, or if you get confused at any second, just look up on Google Rapid Seedbox, how to set up this, and you'll probably find a guide they already made doing so. And they also have chat and stuff like that to help you, which is really nice. So basically what we're gonna do is go to one click apps here and then click on your seed box. And then we're gonna want to install three different applications. Um, the good news is they already pre-install a lot of them. Um, I think they already include Deluge, which is our torrent one. You're gonna wanna install Jacket um, as well as Radar. I think it's down here, Radar and Sonar. They'll probably be in the recommended um, area. 
and you could just click on this and install. Just keep in mind that once your seed box starts up, as it says here, it takes around 15 minutes or so. And every time you install a new app, it will take around five to 10 minutes. So it will take some uh, waiting around for the first hour once you buy your seed box. But after that, you're not really gonna have to bother installing too many things depending on your use case. So it's not a huge issue. So guys, once those things are installed, like I said, you'll find them here. And basically the way you go into them is you click on this little key. This will show you the URL as well as the password to log in. Now radar is what we're gonna be using to queue and look for movies. As you can see, I have public domain content on there already under broken bosoms to do a test. So I'm not gonna be talking too much about sonar in this video since you're pretty much gonna be mirroring exactly what you do in radar with sonar. Now, what do radar and sonar and, and jacket do? Well, these are pretty much gonna be the way you automate your media server. It's pretty much gonna be, you know, looking for a movie, it's gonna look for it and automatically put it in your BitTorrent client, start downloading it, and then it'll be available on whatever app you wanna watch it on, whether you're connecting remotely to your server on your TV, like I mentioned in the, the original diagram, or if you wanna watch it directly on your computer, you could also download it from your Seedbox too. So that's pretty much the basics of those applications. And now let's go ahead and talk about how to set them up. So one of the things you're gonna to need to set up first is something called Jacket. Now Jacket is a indexer and pretty much the way it works is you just go here and click here and it's gonna take you to a URL. Basically what you do with Jacket is you're going to make um, each kind of torrent website you want to look for files on you're going to kind of make it like almost like an rss feed so basically what you can do is do add indexer right here you're going to pick something like o magnet and then pretty much you're just going to do add um, so it's going to add it and then pretty much what you do if you want to use that as an index is that you're going to do copy tor zanab feed so let's go ahead and do yts we're going to do copy the tor zanab feed now we're gonna go over to radar. We're going to go to settings, go to indexes, click right here, and then we're gonna pick Tor Zanab. We're gonna do YTS. We're gonna enter in the URL that we just copied, and then you go back and copy the API key at the top. And then once you do that, you copy that, put it here, and then we're gonna do test. If it does work, there's gonna be a little green check mark as you can see right here. And then you just click save. And now anytime you search for a movie, it's gonna search YTS or this other one I set up and it's gonna see if the movie is there. So now that we have the indexer, it's pretty simple. That's how you do it. And you could do it for as many as you want um, and do as many indexers as you want too. So that's how you set up the ability to search for files. All right, guys, now that we made the index work here, basically what you're going to do now is you want to do a download client. Now a download client is pretty much how you're going to actually download the files. So basically what's gonna happen is you look for a movie file like Broken Blossoms, like I said, um, it's gonna start looking for it um, with the indexer and then once it finds it, it's gonna wanna download it. So what we will do is set up a download client. I already set up Deluge, I put Delugey. You pretty much click plus here and set it up with anything you want. For Deluge, basically in this section, um, what you're going to do is push uh, name it, click enable, put host as localhost, put the port and then a password. This will be your password when connecting to Deluge. And we could find that very easily by going back to the client area. Basically, it's very easy with Rapid Seedbox. It pretty much it comes with the loose pre-installed and you can find your user and password credentials here. So pretty cool, right? Um, as you can see, I have a Linux ISO seeding right here and I don't even have to like really worry about this at all. It's always seeding, which is really cool. And that's one reason that I call seed boxes because you seed stuff very effectively and not worry about it slowing down your internet or anything like that. And it's all up all the time. So people who like private trackers who need a seeding ratio, that's one reason they like seed boxes as well. But now that we're into torrent client, let's go ahead and talk about that further layer of anonymization that you can do with a VPN or in our case, TorGuard's proxy. You go down to proxy right here, put in SOX5 authentication, proxy.torguard.org, port 1080, and then the credentials for your VPN access or from TorGuard. Um, go ahead and click apply and okay. And pretty much anytime you download something here, it's gonna show anyone who's monitoring the torrent swarm, your TorGuard Soxide proxy IP address and not Rapid Seedbox's IP address. This will ensure Rapid Seedbox does not get any DMCA's 
they will have to contact Torgard if they want. And then Torgard will see that it was like a rapid seed box. So then Torgard would have to talk to rapid seed box and all that stuff. Torgard's not even going to collect any logs or anything and not even want to talk to rapid seed box. And rapid seed box is never even going to get that complaint from a copyright troll. So yeah. Not to mention, you're not going to get any DMCA's, right? Because you're just downloading Linux ISOs like me, like a good boy. So there you go. So that's how you do that. So pretty much we've discussed uh, a good number of steps already. We talked about what Radar, Sonar, and Jacket are. We talked about how to integrate Jacket with Radar to find movies for you. And then we talked about how to connect it to this BitTorrent application that downloads them. So now let's go ahead and talk about how do we actually view this content in the first place. So guys, fortunately though, this last step is pretty easy and pretty much it's really kind of up to you. Um, do you want to use something like Plex? Well, that's pretty easy. And uh, the good news is that they even have tutorials to kind of set that up um, with Rapid Seedbox. Um, pretty much it's gonna be kind of resorting to claiming the Plex server, claiming the code and kind of connecting it to your Plex account. So just look up, um, there's even a guide that directly takes you here on how to claim your Plex server if you wanna do it that way. Additionally, you can also use VLC Media Player. It will just kind of connect to the server. So you can install VLC Media Player on your Android streaming box connected to your TV, connect to your Rapid Seedbox server there. Um, and that should be pretty simple. Or like I said, you can use Plex. Um, it doesn't look like this supports um, Jellyfin or anything like that yet, which is kind of a bummer. Um, but honestly, most people use Plex and something like VLC should be fine as well because I've had good experiences. And you can also use kind of file managers and stuff like that to transfer files to your computer. Luckily, there's plenty of tutorials to figure everything out if you kind of had a gap here in this tutorial. But I kind of wanted to just show this method overall because I do think it's a pretty cool method and I haven't really seen too many people talking about how to directly, you know, come up with the idea to implement a media server in the cloud and automate it's one with ones of those tools. So once again, we're kind of coming back to the diagram I made. Um, this is really what we're doing here, and this could help you if you want to print it out to kind of help you get this all set up. Let me know down in the comments down below if you have any comments or concerns or trouble with this, and I'll try to help you out. I also have an active Discord server as well, so make sure to stop by and come say hi. Anyways, guys, that's about it for me, and I'll see you again very soon.